Hey there, I'm Mark. Welcome back into my studio. It's been a bit of a delay since the last video on my filament dry box serial container system. I apologize for that. I've actually had like a bad cough and, and congestion for like almost two weeks. Maybe you can hear that in my voice today. I'm going to try to record this. If there's a lot of cuts in the video, it's because I stopped to cough and I've had to cut that out. So uh, let's see if we can get through this. And it's going to be a fairly simple uh, session today. We're gonna we're working with this container that we've been working on throughout the series, uh, and I'm gonna add the extra uh, optional pieces that go up here on the top corners to add the ability to stack these containers and hang them on the wall. Um, and also, there's some filament guides on the inside so that as you manually push filament back into the container, it kind of helps to guide that and keep it from jumping off the edges of the spool and tangling. Um, so it's four parts to print. I'm gonna switch you over here to uh, my computer and we'll go ahead and uh, load in and slice the parts that we need to print. Uh, so I'm gonna start here with uh, Orca Slicer and I've got, uh, you wanna do the corner bracket these are for the inside brackets. So on in Orca Slicer, on my big Voron printer, I'm gonna print uh, these two pieces in ASA because again, they're inside the container and if I wanna use the active drying system, um, I'm gonna then you know want them to be able to withstand higher, higher temperature environments. So these ones I'm gonna print with ASA. Uh, you need two of these, so we'll go ahead and um, add a uh, extra copy of this one. And you'll see, uh, if, you, if you looked at the previous version of this system, uh, these corner brackets actually look a bit different today than they did in like even my preview video when I went over the whole system a little while back. Uh, this, these have been redesigned. I've been using these for several weeks now. Um, so these new corner bracket pieces are being released today, the same, video, the same day that this video comes out. And so um, if, you, if you've downloaded or used previous versions, uh, which had a more uh, kind of static structured uh, curved piece here. Um, these ones with the flap, I think are better. They accommodate a larger range of different size spools and such. Um, so these are the ones that I'm recommending now. And again, they're released today. So I'm gonna go ahead and print two of these um, over on my uh, Voron printer with the ASA. Um, they just print like this, no supports needed or anything like that. That's the other thing. This new redesign uh, removes the need for any type of supports on these parts. The previous version did have to have supports. So I'm going to go ahead and send those over to my Voron. And then I'm also going to uh, load up in Prusa Slicer um, the other parts. And we're going to go ahead and print those on my uh, Mark IV-S. And I do that because I can print these in PLA and that non-enclosed printer can print that just fine. Um, and also the PLA is a little bit less expensive too, since these are going to be on the outside of the container. I'm not, I don't care so much about uh, the temperature resistance, you know, issue with that. So these are almost the same part, but there are, there are slightly different, you know, obviously this little section here is different. And also even just the width and the fit of some of these lines here and how they fit onto the container are different between the front piece and the back piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and send both of these uh, over to the two printers, uh, let them print for a couple of hours, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we put these on the box. All right, so these parts finished printing. They look really, really good. And I've grabbed everything that we're going to need here to go ahead and put them onto the lid of our container. I did not get the lid of our container ready though, so let me go ahead and grab that here. So we've got our container lid. Um, we need four M3 screws. I'm using M3 by eights here. Uh, anything longer than eight will work just fine as well. So tens or twelves, um, if you have you know like an assortment pack like I do, and you run out of eights, you can use those larger sizes, and that's fine too. And then we need uh, four M3 hex nuts. I've got this longer M3 screw here as well, and we're gonna use that actually just to help uh, put these hex nuts in place. So that's the first step here, is to go ahead and, let me see if I can get you a closer up view here. These should just press into these openings here in the print. And so this one is not so bad. I can just go ahead and press that in by hand. But this other one is up here underneath the flap. So under this flap, there's another one of those holes and it's a bit hard to like reach in here with your hand and try to get that pressed in straight. And so what I've been doing instead is just using a longer M3 screw. I can go ahead and put that in there. <laughs> it's a bit hard to do here on camera. 
and uh, put the nut there as well and grab the end of it and go ahead and screw this in. Let's see, you can see that. So there's the nut on the end of there and then you can just pull it from the back. So that way it helps to line it up so that it's straight and then you can just unscrew the screw. So that's what I've been doing to uh, get these in place. So I'll go ahead and do the other one as well here. Okay, so with those in place, we can now get rid of this longer screw. We don't need it anymore. And I need to go ahead and mark the spots on my lid here that I'm going to drill holes. So I didn't mention it before, but we've got my drill here. I've got a uh, 1 8 inch or three millimeters works as well for the drill bit size here. And we'll start with the, this piece here is the back of the container. So it goes on the wider side of the lid here. And you'll see there's these grooves here and they're made to line up with this, but it is a very tight fit. So here's what I recommend doing. If I push this down on here, I can, I can tell that side to side it's, it's uh, you know, meshed up into these big channels, but it pulls back real easy like this. And so I know that it's not, it hasn't grabbed onto these horizontal ones yet. And so what I can do is if I push it really tight and I push it down, now if I pull back this way, it's not moving at all. And so that's how I know I've now got this in the right spot. And then I can grab my pen and just reach down here through the hole and mark that hole. And same thing over here, mark that hole. So now I have these two dots on my container. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with the other piece. That's the front. And again, if I just set it down here, it pulls um, and is loose. But if I press it down tight, There, you kind of heard, maybe the mic picked that up, it kind of clicked into place, and now it's not moving at all. And then I can go ahead and mark this and that. So now I have four spots marked on my container, and I can go ahead and drill these four holes. All right, that's looking good. I'm just gonna reach in here and kind of clean up a little bit of the excess plastic, just with my fingernails. All right, that's looking good. Nice. And so now we can grab the appropriate one. So this is again the one for the front of the container. I know because it's got the little clip here uh, for the coupler. Uh, cap and it's also the narrower little bit of slots here and again we'll push this on here make sure that it's seated nice and tight there it is and then the, maybe the trickiest part of the whole thing is now you have to line one of these up on the inside and then screw through now before we do that it's important to get the orientation of these flaps correct right so for this one that's the front corner we want the flap like this, so it's pointing backwards through the container along the top. And then when we put the one on the back here, we're gonna point the flap downwards along the back of the container like this. So you want them like this and like this, not you know the other way around like this. It, that won't help manage the filament in the right way as the, as the spool spins. So this one is gonna go this way. Now, what I like to do just to kind of help to hold everything together, and I forgot my hex driver. Hold on, I'll be right back. So what I like to do is go ahead and, without this inside bracket in place, go ahead and get this lined up and start the two screws. So I'll go ahead and put this one down through here and I'll start it and get it into the hole that we drilled in the plastic, but not coming out the other side just yet. and that helps to hold that piece in place. And then I can do the same thing with this other screw down here on the front. Right, so now this is kind of attached on here. And so now it's much easier for me to go ahead and just reach up inside here with this piece and get it to line up with those two screw holes and then screw it in place. 
And this one on the top again, because this flap's kind of in the way, I reach my hand kind of underneath the flap just to support it there. So that as I screw this in, I can then find the hex nut for it to grab onto. All right, tightening them down nice and snug, not over tightening, but I do want to make sure that they're nice and solidly on here. All right, so there's our first one. Again, the flap is pointing toward the back of the container along the top. And as we put in our spool, this will press up against it just like that. So we've got to do the same thing again with the back and this inside corner pointing downward along the back of the container. I'll do that now. All right, so there's our container finished. And now we've got this little cleat here on the back so we can attach this onto, you know, pegboard systems and hang it on, on our, hang it on our wall or whatever. We've got this little slot up here which is for the filament tags. So you can slide one of those down in there. If you want to label the filament that's inside the container and then of course this little hook is for when you pull off your coupler cap. You can then clip that in there so that it doesn't get lost while you're using the container. So those are kind of the functions of this. Um, and then of course the spool management. So let me grab a roll of filament. This, this one will work here. And I'll try to show you guys kind of the idea here with when we get this loaded in here, how those guides work. So we'll go ahead and put this on here. Take off our coupler cap, feed this through. Clip this thing closed. And maybe we'll change our angle here. How about that? So maybe you can see this a little bit better. So now these two flaps up here are pressed against the top of the spool and the back of the spool. And so as we pull the filament, it should roll just fine against those flaps. But then as I push excess back in, first back here at the back as it starts to, just the loose end starts to spool up, um, this keeps the filament from jumping off of the sides of the spool. Same here along the top. So I can pull a pretty good amount out here. There, we're up to you know maybe a meter or so of filament pulled out, and I'll go ahead and roll this back in. Right, and if we look from the front, you know it's loose here, several uh, times around the spool. It looks like maybe even like I don't know eight to ten loops around the spool are now sitting there loose, but none of them jumped off the sides um, on either side, and so we should still be good to then just pull it back out. So if you've got like an MMU that's unloading the filament back in, um, that's what happens here for me with my uh, Prusa MMU-3. It pushes all this filament back in, it stays within the, the boundaries of the spool. Next time it pulls out, it's just fine. So um, that's kind of the idea there with those guides. And like I said, I think that the new, uh, this new design for the guides at least in my testing so far, is much improved over what we had before, and it accommodates a larger uh, variety and size of spools. So um, you guys can give that a try. Let me know if you have any issues or questions, um, specifically also about these guides. Um, we're still working on doing some testing and stuff and making some improvements to them, but I really do like this design a lot. I think it's a lot better than what we had before. Um, so again, as usual, there's a uh, link to the Discord um, down in the description of this of this video as well. Um, if you want to jump in there, there's a filament storage channel in there. You can uh, give me some feedback or if you've got ideas or you know just want to collaborate on working on this project, uh, we do that there as well. So with that, uh, I've made it without too much coughing through this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end it now though because I, I need to go grab a cough drop and a glass of water and uh, recover. So I'll see you next time. Um, there's still some more to talk about with this system. Um, some of the extra optional things um, and some other improvements that uh, I and other community members have been working on. 
Um, so I'll cover those in future video. Uh, but for now, this is the base system with all of the extended parts now on it. Um, and this is the, the style of box that I've been using uh, back there on the wall behind me above all my printers. Uh, hanging on the wall. This is the, the, the version, kind of the full kitted out version that I've been using. Um, so that uh, kind of wraps up this initial kind of build series about the boxes uh, with all the options. And again, there's some other things that we can talk about in the future. But for now, I'm going to say I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you next time.